Ilyash Mariba, Pedri or Ryan Gravenberch? Which one would I start? Which one would I keep on the subs bench? And which one out of the three would I sell? Now, this is a tricky one because when they reach their maximum potential, Ilyash Mariba is probably my favourite out of the three. But if we were looking at the players to begin with, I think I'd have to start Pedri. Now, that leaves me with a bit of a predicament because Ryan Gravenberg is one of my favourite wonder kids of all time. Probably because I've used him in the last few years. I even buy his shirt somewhere. I have his Ajax away shirt. But I think I'm going to have to sell Gravenberg and Ilyash Mariba would be on the subs bench. Yes, welcome to the Omega Loop Gaming Channel. This is my new series that I'm hoping will take off. It might not. You can tell it's coming towards the end of FM21. I'm running out of ideas. This is Start, Sub or Sell, where you guys have been sending me in three players roughly around about the same potential who play in the same position and I have to judge which one I would start, which one would I keep on a subs bench and which one would I sell out of the three. To enter and send me more you can either write to me on Twitter, DM me of course at Luke, and give me a follow while you're there or you can go onto my Discord, the link is down below in the Discord and there's a section that I'm going to put in there for start, sub or sell. Send me your applications and if we get enough and there's enough people watching this one, then I'll do a second episode. Of course, you also need to like the video too to make sure I know that I need to keep doing this and let me know in the comments. I want to see more. Next up we have Matthias Arezzo, Esposito and Wilfred Nonto. Now to begin with, I think I would have to start Esposito. He is one of my favorite players that we have used on my Twitch save right now. He's bagging in so many goals and he just becomes a bit of a physical monster. He has the pace, strength, natural fitness, everything like that. Out of the two between Arezzo and Nonto though, I'm gonna have to go with Wilfred Nonto to bring off the bench. Two reasons really. One, Matthias Arezzo doesn't have as good physicals and although technically he's probably better, in Imagine being a defender and you've just marked Sebastiano Esposito and then you see his number coming up to be taken off. You think, thank God for that. Who's coming on now? Well, it's 20 pace and acceleration, Wilfred Nonto. I would be terrified and so would you. So he makes a substitute bench and unfortunately, I would sell Matthias Arezzo. Now, flicking over to the left-hand side of the pitch, we have the Kyle Saka, we have Thiago Almeida and we have Jeremy Dolko. Which one would I start? Which one would I sub? Which one would I sell? Now, this is kind of tricky because... Thiago Almeida's preferred position is mainly in behind the striker, but he does play really well on either flanks, to be honest. And if we're looking at just that wing on the left, because that's mainly where all three of these players would play, I kind of think I would start Saka. He has a fixed potential. He is amazing. He's English as well. And of course, I've got a lot of love for Saka. All the hate that he received after that penalty miss. Absolutely disgusting, by the way. Let's get that off the table straight away. He would be the guy that I would start. Thiago Almeida. Mader would be the guy I would bring off the substitute bench, mainly because he can play in a multitude of different positions. Maybe you need to change the shape. He's the perfect guy to bring on. Unfortunately, Yeremi Doku, who is a fantastic player, he isn't quite cutting the mustard. I think some of his mentals are quite low. He has rather low finishing, and I've used the other two in different saves or experiments, and especially Almeida has been incredible for me. Yeremi Doku, not so much. He's just a bit of a speed demon. What about Yusuf Demir? What about Florian Wirtz? And what about Giovanni Reina? This one started to really play with my mind because I know Yusuf Demir has that 190 potential range, whereas the other only have 180. And I've seen Yusuf Demir when he's at his maximum and he is incredible. But if we're looking at the player from the very start of the game, Giovanni Reina stands out a little bit more in my opinion. Even though he is only 17 years of age, he has some attributes which you just look at and you go, you could start in the Premier League for sure. And unfortunately, Actually, I think Yusuf Demir would be on the sub bench, which means I would have to sell Florian Verts. As incredible as that guy is, and as good as probably Kai Havertz he is in every single save that I have seen, he's basically just a twin, just two years behind Florian Verts unfortunately, would be on the transfer market. Now, Matt Vaar sent in a really tricky one. Yusuf Omokuku, Fabio Silva, and Jao Pedro. Now, let's start off. Let's not be silly. Yusuf Omokuku obviously starts. He has that 200 potential range, and he's very good from the start of the game. Fabio Silva and Jao Pedro is a tricky one because 
I love Fabio Silva, but João Pedro gave me one of the best videos I've ever done. And in fact, it's the most viewed video on the channel. And for a very good reason, he won a stupid amount of Ballon d'Ors. And I hope you understand that this video is basically just my opinion. Sometimes I'll take in consideration their potential. Sometimes it is pretty much just based on what they look like at the start of the game or previous experiences. I'm I'm willing to listen to your opinions too down in the comments, whether you would have started one, subbed one or sold one. If you've had a bad experience, with one of these players or a great experience with one of the players that I sold, I want to know down in the comments. But for me, João Pedro has to come off the bench and Fabio Silva would be the guy I'll be saying goodbye to. But it would be a tearful goodbye because I love me some Fabio Silva and I really hope he does well in real life too for Wolves. Now, my friend Olivia has given me a centre-back combination of Andrea Papetti, Namdi Collins, and Anel Ahmed Hozic, which is really difficult because two of these I've used a lot this this FM in, um, in Andrea Papetti and Anel, and I have bigged them up so much. And I think out of the two of those, I would have to start Andrea Papetti. At the start of the game, he is good enough to start for any club, to be honest. And if he has a decent potential, he's world class. Anel has that fixed potential and he's 21. There's just a few little weaknesses that I think he needs to work on before he becomes a good enough centre-back, although he's slightly taller. And unfortunately, I'd have to sell Namdi Collins. So I would start Papetti, I would keep subbed Anel Ahmed Hodzic, and I would sell Namdi Collins. Namdi Collins is just not as good as these two, even when he reaches his maximum potential. What about three French centre-backs in Tangai Nianzu, Wesley Fofana and Todibo? Nianzu is only 18. However, at the start of the game, he is a very good player to begin with. I think I would keep him on the bench. Wesley Fofana, I've seen play obviously in real life. Tadebo, I haven't, not in like person, but on the television. And Wesley Fofana impressed me a lot. But that's not what I'm judging it on. In the game, he is still amazing, to be honest, and always ends up at a very good club. Tadebo, I think, would be the one that I'd sell. I got a feeling he has some bad hidden attributes. Don't quote me on that. But I feel like he never really reaches his full potential and that is because he has been good on the game for the last couple of years and I think in real life he kind of doesn't have as good attitude as what the other two have so potential wise he might not make it and I think I could cash in on Tadebo early on and get a lot of money for him so that's who I would sell and I would start Wesley Fofana. Another three centre-backs in Nicolo Armini. We have Josco Guardiol and we have Ibanez from Roma. Starting off with, I think you have to start Ibanez. He's just, at the start of the game, a far better player. He is ready-made to be one of the best centre-backs in the world. Uh, and some of his attributes just really suit the match engine. He's 6'2", solid centre-back. The sub-bench. If this was last year, it probably would be Armini because Armini was very good on the game last year. However, he's been slightly declined and Andrea Papetti he's now above him and that's why I'd look to sell him and Josco Gvardiol if he reaches his maximum is arguably the best centre back on the game. Ibanez has that fixed potential which means he's slightly more likely to be better than Gvardiol but I still think keeping Josco on the bench is far more of an intelligent decision and selling Niklo Armini. In a couple of years time you might be lucky to swap these two but the start of the game Ibanez starts. Now the first repeated player once again we have Pedri but also alongside him we have two new players in Bellingham and Foden. This one I mean Bellingham is more of a centre midfielder rather than the the cam in behind the striker but all three players can play there so I mean the all three players can both play in behind the striker too. I'm going to base this off the fact that they can play Play in both positions as well so I think again I would start Pedri at the start of the game he's far superior we've seen his quality in real life in the Euros recently and we know he has that 190 potential range Foden has a fixed potential I think of 175 around about that area Bellingham has a potential range of 180 so he could be better than Foden however Phil Foden, I think is more likely to reach his full potential so I'd rather keep him on the bench and I would probably look to sell Jude Bellingham. But that's a tough one because I love all three of those players. And if you had any of those three, you'd obviously be looking to start them and probably be looking to, to use them throughout your career, whatever club you're at, if you could keep hold of them. That's tricky, but yes, yeah, start Pedri, sub Foden, sell Bellingham. And the final one for this list is Yusuf Demir, Curtis Jones, and Ryan Cherky. Now, Curtis Jones, for long-time viewers 
of the channel is a club legend. We've done some incredible stuff with him in previous saves in 2020, I think, FM20. So I always have a little bit of a thing for Curtis Jones, despite him being a Liverpool player and me being a Man United fan. However, Yusuf Demir would be the guy that I would start. I think Yusuf just has something a little bit different and knowing what he can look like at his maximum, I think he would have to be there. And that makes the other decision very easily. Ryan Cherky would be the guy I'd be looking to offload. At the start of the game as well, he's only 16, he's got a lot to progress, whereas Curtis Jones coming off the bench is very much good enough. And he can play in a number of different positions again. If you want to take off Demir, who's more of an attacking player, and put Curtis Jones in a deep line player in the centre midfield, then that would obviously suit as well. So I think he makes more of an impact coming off the bench. That's not to say you can't start him, he's an incredible player. All of these are very good, obviously. Ryan Cherky is the guy on the transfer list. Curtis Jones is on the sub bench. Yusuf Demir starts. What do you make of this video? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some more suggestions down in the comments or on Twitter or on Discord and maybe we'll make another video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We are getting ever so close now to 20,000 subscribers. Help us get there. Bye-bye.